All right, so we are in the final question of Chapter 7 from uh, Statistical Rethinking, 2nd Edition. So this is question 7H5. Uh, before running any of this code, make sure that you have uh, uh, installed and loaded the Rethinking Package with these two code blocks up here. And let's get going. Okay, um, so we are uh, returning to a data set, and a set, and uh, at least we've looked at a couple of these models before. Um, from the FOXES data set, right? And if you remember the FOXES data set, we have some variables and we have used them to try to predict the weight of FOXES. And so some of these variables included average food, the group size, and the area of their territory, I suppose. Okay. So we're going to test five different models and, and here they are listed. Uh, so these are the predictive variables that we will be using to predict weight or regress weight upon um, and so we're going to have five different models and then we're going to compare them uh, with WAIC or PSIS um, and uh, well we're going to we're going to look at the comparison um, and we're going to notice some differences and then we're going to try to explain those differences given the the DAG given the the causal structure of the data itself so uh, so here I'm just pulling or I'm just rolling out uh, each of the models. So uh, in the book, all of these variables are standardized and that's what they are now. Um, and then we have uh, uh, the first model, second model, third model, etc. Okay, so um, we can go ahead and run these and it runs pretty quick. Uh, we don't have any output here. So we're not looking at the summary outputs. They're not uh, real important for this question, but if we wanted to, we could use the, the pricey uh, uh, summary function. Um, and now we're going to compare them. Um, and, and you can do one or the other. I'll, I'll show both WAIC and PSIS here. Uh, this takes a second to run, so bear with me. There's one, there's the WAIC, there's the PSIS, okay. Um, and so, uh, so let's look at these here for a second. So uh, again, as we look at these, uh, we have the WAIC or PSIS metric uh, on the leftmost column, and then the standard error of that metric right next to it. And then we have the difference uh, in WAIC or in PSIS um, between the top ranked model and, and the model itself. So for, so for example, um, these two functions they put the best, uh, the best score for for PSIS or WAIC uh, at the top. Okay, and so for for both of these metrics, uh, M1 is doing the best. Okay, followed by M2, M3, M4, M5. Okay, um, so when you run this, I've ran this a few times. Uh, sometimes you'll get them in a slightly different order. Sometimes three will be better than two, but it, it well, actually that goes to the point that is being made with this particular uh, question. Okay, but here we see that they're all ranked basically in, in the order uh, in which we provided the, the predictive variables. Okay, um, so, uh, so anyway, so we have the difference from say model two and model one and model three and model one. Okay, and that difference grows as we're, as we're going from best to worst. But then we can also estimate a standard error of that difference, okay? Um, so, uh, so for instance, the estimated difference between model two and model one is 0 0.2, but the standard error of that difference is 3.73, okay? Similarly, for model, say, five here, the estimated difference between model five and model one uh, in, in, uh, in WAC is 10.17, and the standard error is 7.50, okay? So, um, so let's look at, uh, so maybe that, let's just continue on here. Um, we also have PWIC or P, uh, PSIS, and this is the implied number of parameters or the penalty term um, of each of these models here, okay? Um, so uh, that doesn't really come into play here in this question, so I won't spend too much time addressing it. Uh, and then finally, the weight of these models. So that's saying that uh, if we, let's say that we wanted to, uh, rather than select one model, we wanted to combine the predictions of all of these models. This is just one way of thinking about it. How would we, uh, how much of, how much should we rely on M1 versus M2 versus M3 versus M4 versus M5? And so the weight kind of gives us that. And so, uh, so these two outputs, PSIS and the WIC, are suggesting that we put you know, a 
about a third or more uh, into model one, and then a little bit less as we go down. Okay, so now that we kind of have our bearings here, um, let's uh, let's look at these different weights. Okay, so uh, so in this uh, in the WAIC, we see that model one and model two are actually pulling just about the same weight. If this were carried out to more decimal points, then model one would have a slightly higher number, but not much. And that's actually reflected in the fact that here, that this difference, the difference between the two models is actually very small, especially compared to the error of the estimate, right? The, the, in fact, the error of the estimate, one standard error of the estimate is actually dwarfing the size of the difference or the estimated difference, right? And similarly for model three, even though it's scoring a little bit less on the weight, uh, its predict or its estimated difference is also dwarfed by uh, it, the standard error of that estimate. So really models one, two, and three are basically the same. Okay, they're basically tied because the differences that are being estimated, um, they, they're, the error on that estimate suggests that, uh, suggests that there might not be any difference. Okay. Now, when we get down here for models four and five, we see that the difference kind of skyrockets a little bit uh, and that the, uh, that the size of the error is actually larger than, than the, uh, I'm sorry, the size of the difference between the models versus the standard error of that estimate, um, the, the, the actual estimate is, is larger than the, than the standard error. Okay. So again, what we see here is that models one, two, and three are basically tied in terms of their predictive capacity and models four and five are basically tied, but models one, two, and three are definitely better than models four and five. So now the question becomes, why are models one, two, and three tied? And why are models four and five tied, right? Um, or stated a little bit more precisely, why are models one, two, and three tied, even though they are using different uh, predictor variables or explanatory variables, okay? And similarly, why are they not tied with the other two? And why are the other two model? Uh oh, I'm going to mess something up there. And why are models four and five tied, even though, again, they're using different predictor variables? Okay. Uh, and so the way that we can uh, start to address this is to look at the, the, the DAG, which the question advised us to do, is to look at the DAG of this data. Okay. So this is the, uh, the DAG of the data. Um, where uh, area is affecting average food, uh, average food is affecting weight, group size is affecting weight, and average food is affecting group size. Okay, so, um, so here's what we see. We see that the first three models all contain this variable group size. Okay, they all contain group size. And that seems to be important because group size is definitely telling us something about weight, according to the DAG, all right? Now, when we look at models four and five, Models four and five don't contain group size. They, they just contain average food or area. And so the, the information, the predictive capacity that is inherent to group size on weight uh, is missing from models four and five. So it's not really a mystery then why models four and five are predicting so poorly. Okay. So that, that distinguishes why one, two, and three are doing better than four and five. But now why are one, two, and three basically tied and why are models four and five basically tied? And it comes down to which of these two variables, area and average food, uh, are, are within the regression, okay? Well, notice that uh, area is only acting through average food, okay? Area only acts through average food. So, um, so if I am conditioning on or, uh, average food, I know everything there is to know about how area is affecting weight, okay? Um, and so, so in a way, area, so as far as weight's concerned, tell me average food or tell me weight, doesn't matter. Um, I should be able to glean the same, basically the same information, maybe not all the same information, but pretty close, okay? So, um, so models four and five contain either area or average food, but again, this is, from the point of view of weight, Tell me either one and that's fine. I'll, I'll, you know, that will equally assist my predictions or very similarly assist my prediction. Okay. Now models two and three, again, also include along with group size, either area or average food. So again, those are equivalent. 
and then model one just contains both of them okay and uh, so anyway that's why models one two and three are are tied uh, models four and five are tied okay that's it